Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Morgan Church for this service of morning prayer. On uh, what day are we on? It's the 20th of July. And this morning we have five lovely guests in, our, uh, in the church building to uh, say morning prayer with us. Um, well, I suppose, I'm not sure we can call the rector a guest, but maybe it's, <laughs> she... <laughs> God's guest. God's guest, yes, we are all Christ's guests this morning. So we have Helen here, we have David and Jackie, and we have Fleur and Chris. Chris normally is in the chat window um, saying hello, so uh, you can all say hello to her in the chat window yourselves, but she is actually here in the room in the building with us this morning. So welcome to you both. Uh, this morning, we are going to be celebrating uh, two, the lives of two um, saints, uh, the first of which is Margaret of Antioch, Margaret of Antioch, who was a martyr in the fourth century. Um, not a lot known about her, I have to say, but uh, I'll read you what we do have and then um, you can learn a little bit. So Margaret, also called Marina, gave her life during the Diocletian persecutions at the beginning of the fourth century. Now, you may know if you're a church historian that uh, the persecution officially ended in 313 AD, so she would have given her life right at the end of the Roman persecutions. Uh, her preaching uh, before her death is said to have converted many to the Christian faith. And of course, that was at a time when converting to the Christian faith meant that you may have been uh, put to death and certainly persecuted for your beliefs. Uh, we don't have any of those writings available to us. After all, she was a woman. Um, sadly, we don't have many women's writings from that period. Uh, but there was a reading from a sermon of Pope Leo the Great, uh, a, a very important personage from the 5th century, who writes of that period. And he says the following, which is you know, very interesting and powerful words indeed. So writing in the 5th century, Pope Leo the Great says... Those of you who think that because the persecutions are over, there is no struggle against our enemies, I challenge you to search the intimate hidden places of your heart. Become discerning inspectors of your soul. Explore its byways. Check that there lurks no opposing force ready to attack you, no tyrant waiting to dominate the fortress of your mind. I beg you, make no peace with avarice and despise all wealth gained from unjust practices. Refuse any pact with pride, and fear more to be received in honour than to be walked over in lowliness. <clears throat> Distance yourself from anger. Do not allow the thirst for vengeance to awaken in you the torment of envy. Renounce the pursuit of pleasure. Turn away from impurity. Reject luxury. Fly from evil, resist colluding with falsehood. Once you recognise that you too have to wage war on many fronts, then as the martyrs like Margaret before us, you will secure a glorious victory. So I don't know about you, I'm now feeling extraordinarily guilty. <laughs> <clears throat> but that's how it was for, for the Christians in the 5th century, looking back at the 4th. Our second uh, person that we're celebrating the life of this morning is someone who I've never heard of before called Bartolome de la Casas, who was an apostle to the Indies in 1566. So Bartolome de la Casas was a 16th century Dominican priest who became known as the defender of the Indians in the New World of America. Born in 1484 at Las Casas in Seville, um, Bartolome uh, arrived in Haiti in 1502 and underwent a conversion after witnessing the injustices inflicted on the Indians. Proclaiming that Jesus Christ was being crucified in the poor, he went on to spend a lifetime challenging the church and the empire of his day. He was consecrated Bishop of Chiapa in Mexico in 1543, where he continued his prophetic role and emerged as a man of unquestioned courage and a theologian of remarkable depth, whose vision continues to set in relief 
the challenge of the gospel in a world of injustice. He died on 18th of July in the year 1566. I apologise for my terrible Spanish pronunciation, not a language I've ever studied. Uh, there is a lot more about uh, his life. Um, apparently, uh, there was a book called Las Casas in Search of the Poor of Jesus Christ by Gustavo Gutierrez, um, which has a very interesting reading about his life if you want to go and uh, look for that online. But I won't go into that now, it's quite long. So let's now turn to our service sheets, which I hope you have before you. I put it into the chat window earlier on. Um, everybody here in the uh, church has a sight of a copy of it. So morning prayer for Tuesday, the 20th of July. O Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouth shall, shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day that you have made, as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep. Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be, God be God forever. forever. Now we move to our opening prayer. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us, to let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So now we scroll down a bit to get to Psalm 5. Our first psalm is Psalm 5. And I invite the people in the room, if you would say the even verses along with me. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my lamentation. Hearken, Hearken to the voice of my crying, my King and my God. For to you I make my prayer. In the morning, Lord, you will hear my voice. Early in the morning I make my appeal to you and look up. For you are the God who takes no pleasure in wickedness. No evil can dwell with you. The boastful cannot stand in your sight. You hate all those that work wickedness. You destroy, you destroy those who speak lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful the Lord will abhor. But as for me, through the greatness of your mercy, I will come into your house. I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make your way straight before my face. For there is no truth in their mouth, in their heart is destruction. Their throat is an open sepulchre, and they flatter with their tongue. Punish, Punish them, them, O God, God. Let, let them, them fall, fall through their, their own devices. devices. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out. For they have rebelled against you. But, but let, let all, all who take refuge in you be glad. Let, let them, them sing out their joy forever. You will shelter them, so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous, and, and with, with your favour you will defend, defend them as with a shield. shield. Glory to the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. 
Now we come to Psalm 6. O Lord, rebuke me not in your wrath, neither chasten me in your fierce anger. Have, Have mercy, mercy on me, Lord, Lord for, for I, I am weak. weak. Lord, Lord, heal, heal me, me, for my, for my bones, bones are racked. My soul also shakes with terror. How long, O Lord, how long? Turn, Turn again, again, O Lord, Lord and, and deliver my soul. Save, Save me for your loving mercy's sake. For in death no one remembers you. And who can give you thanks in the grave? I am, I am weary, weary with, with my groaning. groaning. Every, Every night I drench my pillow and flood my bed with my tears. My eyes are wasted with grief and worn away because of all my enemies. Depart, Depart from me, all you that, that do evil, evil for the, the Lord, Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. All, All my enemies, enemies shall be put to shame and confusion. They shall suddenly turn back in their shame. Glory to the, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now Psalm 8. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty, Your majesty above, above the heavens is praised, out, out of the, the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might steal the enemy and the avenger. When, when I, consider I consider your heavens, the work, the work of, of your fingers, fingers the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have, you have made him little lower than, than the angels, angels and, and crowned him with <coughs> glory and honour. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under his feet. All, all sheep and, and oxen, even, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, Lord our, our Governor, Governor how, How glorious is your name in all the world. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now David is going to read our first reading from Ezekiel for us. Thank you, David. From Ezekiel chapter 18, beginning at the first verse. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating the, this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. If a man is righteous and does what is lawful and right, if he does not eat upon the mountains or lift up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, does not defile his neighbour's wife or approach a woman during her menstrual period, does not oppress anyone but restores to the debtor his pledge, commits no robbery, gives his bread to the hungry and covers the naked with the garment, does not take advance or accrued interest, withholds his hand from iniquity, executes true justice between contending parties, follows my statutes, and is careful to observe my ordinances, acting faithfully. Such a one is righteous. He shall surely live, says the Lord God. If he has a son who is violent, a shedder of blood, who does any of these things, though his father does none of them, who eats upon the mountains, defiles his neighbour's wife, oppresses the poor and needy, commits robbery, does not restore the pledge, lifts up his eyes to the idols, commits abomination, 
takes advance or accrued interest. Shall he then live? He shall not. He has done all these abominable things. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon himself. But if this man has a son who sees all the sins that his father has done, considers and does not do likewise, who does not eat upon the mountains or lift up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, does not defile his neighbour's wife, does not wrong anyone, exacts no pledge, commits no robbery, but gives his bread to the hungry and covers the naked with a garment, withholds his hand from iniquity, takes no advance or accrued interest, observes my ordinances and follows my statutes. He shall not die for his father's iniquity. He shall surely live. As for his father, because he practised extortion, robbed his brother and did what is not good among his people, he dies for his iniquity. Yet you say, why should not the son suffer for the iniquity of the father? When the son has done what is lawful and right, and has been careful to observe all my statutes, he shall surely live. The person who sins shall die. A child shall not suffer for the iniquity of a parent, nor a parent suffer for the iniquity of a child. The righteousness of the righteous shall be his own, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be his own. Thank you, David. We turn now to our canticle, uh, A Song of Peace. Spirit of God, teach us your ways that we may walk in the paths of peace. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations, and shall mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Spirit of God, teach us your ways, that we may walk in the paths of peace. Our second reading is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, uh, from chapter 11, beginning at verse 16. I repeat, let no one think that I am a fool, but if you do, then accept me as a fool, so that I too may boast a little. What I am saying in regard to this boastful confidence, I am saying not with the Lord's authority, but as a fool since many boast according to human standards, I will also boast. For you gladly put up with fools, being wise yourselves. For you put up with it when someone makes slaves of you, or preys upon you, or takes advantage of you, or puts on airs, or gives you a slap in the face. To my shame, I must say, we were too weak for that. But whatever anyone dares to boast of, I, I am speaking as a fool, I also dare to boast of that. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I am talking like a madman. I am a better one, with far greater labours, far more imprisonments, uh, far, with, with countless floggings and often near death. Five times I have received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked. 
For a night and a day I was adrift at sea, on frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers and sisters, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, hungry and thirsty, often without food, cold and naked. And besides other things, I'm under daily pressure because of my anxiety for all the churches. It's beginning to sound like your, your work, <laughs> Helen, isn't it? <clears throat> Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is made to stumble and I am not indignant? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, blessed be he forever, knows that I do not lie. In Damascus, the governor under King Aretas set a guard on the city of Damascus in order to seize me. But I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped from his hands. So now we turn to our responses. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open, Open my, my eyes, eyes, O Lord, that I may see, see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the paths of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. And now the Gospel canticle, the Benedictus, which we'll say all the way through together. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. So two um, <clears throat> not easy to understand readings, I have to say. Not, not the most difficult that I've come across, but certainly uh, relatively tricky uh, ones this time. Uh, Ezekiel, um, I think probably we get the message of Ezekiel from the first paragraph, and the rest is just trying to explain the point. Ezekiel is essentially saying that... Uh, Although you have a proverb that says, you know, that the, your offspring will bear the pen, penalty for your own iniquity, actually, um, God says, no, that's not true, that uh, people bear the, uh, the punishment or the blessing for what they themselves have done, not what their relatives have done. Of course, that was a, a, certainly a big idea in ancient Israel, was that uh, uh, punishments uh, went down family lines and uh, Indeed, there are passages where God appears to say that he will punish someone's children because of uh, a father or mother's iniquity. So uh, there is tension there between that old idea, which also was spoken in the name of God, and this idea spoken by the prophet, 
um, that, in fact, uh, that wasn't the case. So as is usual in the Bible, we can't just look at everything completely literally um, without the context of people saying perhaps other things that are apparently of, of the opposite later on. So there is a, a changing view about how uh, God's uh, punishment, so to speak, works against people, whether it's individual or follows family lines. And of course, we may feel that uh, what God says about um, for example, uh, being put to death if you receive interest uh, on your savings um, might be something that we think uh, perhaps we don't do today. So again, a different context, a different time, a different place, and our understanding of what God is about has shifted. So the warning is don't just take one little bit of the Bible and say that's true for all time and all places, because even within the Bible itself, uh, different ideas are put forward about what God's character is and what he is asking of us. And then we have Paul famously boasting. Um, of course, he's not really wanting to boast. What he's really trying to do is saying that these other, these other super apostles who come to see you and are trying to turn you away from the faith that I gave you, um, they're boasting about their background and their, their, um, you know, their, their Hebrew and uh, um, Jewish background and saying that they've got all these uh, bona fides, but in fact, any of the bona fides that they've got, I've got even more, but I don't actually like to boast about that. So he's trying to make the point that um, although he can boast, he doesn't because that's not the way that uh, Christ was. Christ did not boast in that fashion at all, and therefore neither will he. But of course, he could if he needed to. Um, and so again, a little bit of a tension there between him actually doing the very thing that he's trying not to do uh, in order to prove that somebody else doing it is wrong. So uh, a very complex situation, pastoral situation for Paul to uh, uh, manage a church at a distance, which I'm sure every rector in the country identifies with very strongly, uh, and especially in the present day during lockdowns. So now let's turn to our time of prayer. Heavenly Father, help us to be aware of your presence with us now and always. Help us to experience your love for us now and always. May we see your love, your presence in the warm light outside, in the beautiful surroundings of your creation, of all the flowers and fruit that are growing on trees and bushes. We give thanks, Lord, for all our senses, for the sounds of birdsong, the smells of fragrances, the touches of those we love. Father, help us to allow your love to flow through us, to reach out to those around us, to our neighbours, our friends, those we struggle to get on with. Help us to show wisdom when we are in conflict with others. to feel your compassion in our hearts. Help us to forgive ourselves 
for all the wrong we have done, to be honest about the things that we have done, to ask forgiveness of others, and to be ready to offer forgiveness at every opportunity. We think on those people who we have a particular care for. Those who are close to us, those we know who are struggling, who have asked for our prayers. We name them silently before God in our hearts. As the number of COVID cases rise again, we give thanks for vaccines, for those who made them distribute them, for all medics, orderlies, managers, decision makers. Father, we ask your blessing on our nation and all the nations of the world for wisdom in decision making, for generosity of spirit. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And of your great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you all for joining us this morning. Let's see, who did we have this morning? We saw uh, Val, thank you, and Moira, and Celia, and Ange, and uh, Helen sneaking in twice, and Margaret. So a very warm welcome, and thank you for spending this morning prayer with us this morning, and also to anyone who is watching online later, or who indeed is watching right now and hasn't said anything in the chat window. Thank you and God bless you. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and all those you love and care for this day and always. So whatever you're going to be doing today, I hope you manage to find a way to stay cool. Uh, perhaps uh, st stay near a hose pipe or something and occasionally squirt yourself with a sprinkler or, or maybe a cold shower, I don't know. Um, or if you're hiding in the, in the house with all the curtains closed, that might be another way of managing the heat. But uh, 
whatever you're managing to do, um, God be with you. And uh, our next online service will be on Thursday morning at 9am when uh, Helen will be leading us. That's right, isn't it what you're doing Thursday? Yes, so Helen's going to lead us and she'll tell us all about the Sunday services that we're going to look forward to. <laughs> I'm getting wise to that. <laughs> so God bless you all and farewell for now. Bye-bye.